Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a tambourine kick plate. Well, it's a simple project and it's a simple idea, but if you're into making your own music or playing music and adding a little bit of percussion to it, well, this may be the project for you. And we're going to start off the, uh, this week's show by heading over to the bench and talking a little bit about what we're going to do. Well, this project is going to change and morph depending on what type of tambourine you have, whether you have the full circle type or the half moon like this one here. And the reason for this project is if you need to add a bit of percussion, normally a tambourine is played using your hands, but if you're strumming a guitar or a ukulele or what have you, obviously your hands are busy doing other things, but you have two feet that you could use. But playing a tambourine with your foot on the ground doesn't provide much sound, especially if it's a solid surface like a wooden floor or a concrete or what have you. On a carpet, you can get a little bit of sound out of it, but not on a solid surface. And for that, what we're going to need is some sort of platform to be able to rock this thing back and forth on. What we're going to be using is three quarter inch plywood because that's what I have. I know it's a little overkill. I'd prefer a half inch, but three quarter is available to me right now. And we're going to be taking dimensions of our tambourine to see what size board we need. Now this particular tambourine is just a little under nine inches on the width side and you need some area to put your foot on this end of the tambourine. So just to give us some wiggle room, I'm going to cut a piece of plywood that's going to be 10 inches by 11 inches. Well, now that you've got that plywood cut, the next step that you want to do is lay your tambourine on top of this board and just line up the tambourine with the back edge. This is the 11 inch length, this is the 10 inch, and we're just going to line it up here so that we know roughly where to line this thing up. And We're going to draw a line here, a square line across just to mark the base of the tambourine. And we're going to make sure it goes all the way across, just like that. And once we get that line marked on there, this is the tough part. Line up your tambourine on that line, make sure it's lined up down here. And once you get that line set, it's as tough as tracing your tambourine now. So it's this isn't a rocket science project here. Obviously, if I can do it, it's not a rocket science project. So there we go. There is our tambourine traced onto our board. And we don't want to cut it just yet. Uh, at this point, what we want to do is mark out the area for the foot kick. Now what I've done is I've got my bevel here and I've set it to whatever angle lines up with the side that we just traced. And in my case, it happened to be 20 degrees. It might be different for yours, I don't know. And we're just going to line it up with the edge of our traced out tambourine and carry that straight line, in my case at 20 degrees, all the way to the bottom of our 11 inch side here and this will be the area where your foot is actually going so it's uh it's not imperative measurements here guys you can do whatever you'd like and at this point now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get a circle template or you can use a jar lid or a can or whatever it doesn't matter and i'm just going to round off these edges here so i don't have this sharp corner so I decided against the circle template just to show you guys that you can use whatever you have around the shop. And in my case here, it happens to be a container of wood filler, and uh, which I don't use very much, but that's okay. I'm using it now, aren't I? And we'll just round off those corners with the can of wood filler as our template. 
and that works just fine. We're not building an heirloom here, we're building a tambourine kick plate. So this is the basic shape now of our tambourine kick plate and what I want to do is I want to place the tambourine back on here, line it all up, and once it's lined up I want to trace the inside of it just so we get an idea of the thickness of our tambourine and it doesn't have to be perfect it's just a reference line so scribble out the inside marking here and in my case I've got a couple more small ones here that I will mark out as well and what this is going to uh, show us is we need to drill some holes for mounting our tambourine and these will be our kind of boundary lines of where our holes are drilled. So I will remove that and you can see hopefully uh, where these lines are. Now that we have these lines here on the inside and the outside of each one, let me just take this out to try to give you a better view. On the inside and the outside of each of these lines, so right here and right here, we need to drill holes. And I'm going to say that the holes will most likely be around 3 16 They're going to be there to use cable ties or zip ties or tie wraps or whatever you want to call this product. Um, but we're going to dr drill entry holes because that is how we're going to hold our tambourine to our kick plate so that we're not causing any damage to our instrument. We'd hate to do that. We don't want to permanently mount this. If we were going to permanently mount it, we sure as heck wouldn't be using construction grade plywood. So now that we have those marked out, we're going to drill our entry holes, make sure that they're big enough to fit your tie wraps, and I'm going to take this whole assembly over to the scroll saw and I'm going to cut it all out. I just want to show you here that the holes will go just on the edge of your marked faces that you've placed there from the inside diameter of the uh, tambourine. On these inside marks, you'll have a hole on each side. So carry on drilling that. Well now that you've got all your holes drilled and your kick plate cut, give it a good sanding and clean up those edges. You know, take away the, any kind of burrs or what have you. Sand it up, boys. Well now you may be thinking that we're pretty much done here and we almost are. The problem here that we have is it slides around. So you try to use this and it's going to slide on you. So the solution is non-slip rubber feet and they're fairly inexpensive at your local uh, hardware store. Here's the thing though, don't make the mistake of mounting these things. Let me just get a few more. Don't make the mistake of mounting them like this to steady the platform. That is not going to work, and I'm going to show you why in just a minute. But first, I'm going to show you where to mount them. You want to mount these up near the top, just like that. And then as well, where your tambourine sits, you can see this here. You've got your bottom holes drilled for your last uh, cable ties. Just mount them inside here like this on the bottom to give you the stability there but you kind of want to get that rocking point. So you want to keep them up top, right up in here. Can you see that? 
So now that we've got them laid out like that, just remove this and mark your holes. Once you get them marked, you can mount these on the underside of your kick plate. So the four feet are mounted on the bottom and we've eliminated that sliding problem. However, once you start kicking this thing, now you can slide it. And for that, we're gonna put two more feet on. However, if we put them on at the same level as these four, we're just gonna make it the same as our original problem that on a solid surface, you can tap it all you want, you're not gonna get any sound. So what we're gonna do is we're going to measure the diameter of these particular feet and right in each one of these corners we're going to carefully measure it and lay it out and we're going to countersink a hole so that these will be just below the surface of sorry these ones will be just below the surface of these ones here these will be the stabilizing feet and these will be the kick feet so that when you kick down you're going to be kicking down on rubber and it's not going to be sliding for you. Now, I'm not sure of the distance. You don't need much to get a lot of sound out of a tambourine. So I'm going to countersink these at a quarter inch and then we're going to try it and see how it works. Well, the hole that I needed for these particular feet was actually a one and one eighth inch Forstner. Um, I probably could have gotten away with a one inch, but I thought it would have been a little tight. So I gave myself a little bit of play on either side. Um, again, you got to remember this isn't an heirloom piece, but we'll screw these in. I only went down 3 16ths of an inch. I figure I can always, you know, put it deeper if need be. And I really don't need it too, too deep. But you can see here now we've got a bit of a rock to it, which is good. And when, when we're rocking on that, we're landing on the rubber feet and we're not sliding forward. Now there's going to be some slide, but not a lot. Now we need to mount our tambourine. And for that, all we're going to do is we're going to place our tambourine on there. We're going to use some of our zip ties or tie wraps or whatever you want to call them, cable ties, whatever. And we're going to put them in around the tambourine through the board and cinch them down. And now that it's attached, of course, all there is to do is to test it. So let's give it a spin and see how we do. have it. A tambourine kick plate. Guys, this isn't a project about the fancy woodworking and the fancy techniques and that sort of thing. This is a project about seeing a need for something that you require to have a bit of fun and to enhance something else and using your woodworking skills to turn around and make it, whether it be something simple or something extravagant. It's not so much about the woodworking here. It's not about the how to, it's about the why. It's why would you want to? Because you know what? It makes things better for yourself and it makes you happy to do it. And it doesn't have to be pretty and it doesn't have to be dovetailed and fancy miters and dados and all of this kind of stuff. Sometimes woodworking is about getting into the shop, taking a piece of wood and cutting it up to make it so that it suits something that you need. 
It's about why we do it. It's not about the how. It's not about the look at what I did. Sometimes it's just about having a bit of fun. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this show and I hope some of you out there who like to make a little bit of music are going to try this project because I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun, it's very practical, and you know what, I kind of enjoy it. So guys, I want to thank you for tuning in again this week and I'm hoping that you're going to join me again next week for yet another woodworking video.